cold. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's the Come on, is that all you got? There's no one around to even ask. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to today's episode of What We Spotted By The Side Of The Road. I've brought protection for this one because I don't really want to touch it. Aishola and I were now currently two weeks and just under 400 miles into our self-supported tandem tour around the southwest coast of England. We'd just arrived in Tor Point and we're about to catch the ferry to Plymouth across the River Tamar. All right, we're almost in Plymouth. We're down at Tor Point and from Tor Point there's a ferry across the water. I think into the actual Plymouth town. Where did you come from? We just came down the road. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you meant to queue up because of Covid, we meant to count you yeah, on, no all right? Just wait here for a minute. Yeah, no worries. Oh, yeah, 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 once we'll I can get you all, well, I'll get yeah, you Yeah, thank you very much. We've been incredibly lucky with the weather on this trip. We hadn't had a single drop of rain over the last two weeks, which is pretty unbelievable if you consider that this is the UK. But of course, this dry street couldn't last for our entire tour. And just as we arrived in Plymouth, the weather turned and it started to drizzle. We pushed into town, then hid from the rain and ate breakfast under a small pavilion overlooking the 72-foot Smeaton's Tower Lighthouse and Plymouth Sound Inlet. Very good. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh. It was here that we met Jim and his collie dog out on their morning walk. Do, do you ride? Do you cycle? I used to years ago, but uh, once I learned how to drive vehicles, <laughs> <laughs> I took over, yeah. And that's the ideal way you're putting weight on, you see? Yeah. So, how long it take you to get the fuel then? Two well, days? No, we're sticking, we're kind of sticking along the kind of back roads right along the coast, so yeah. I suspect it'll be. Yeah, three or four, five maybe, something like that. Yeah, yeah, we're, take, we're taking it easy. It's all right if you've got the magic pill. If you ain't got that, it's going to take you longer, isn't it? <laughs> What's the magic pill? Oh, that's the one I'm waiting for. <laughs> With the rain cleared up, we jump back on the road, onwards along the coast. Look what Ed's doing. Come on, is that what you got? So, what is this, huh? What is this? Oh, check out that stream. <laughs> the fuel stove that we cook on runs on bog standard petrol. I'd noticed the night before that the fuel bottle was running low, so we stopped up at a petrol station to refuel. You got it already? No, 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 no I just asked. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, yeah, fine. So that works then, doesn't it? How much you pay? It'll be like 50p. It'll be, <laughs> it'll be less than that. It'll be like 40p's worth. What was it for? Oh, it's for a stove. It runs on oh, petrol. Right. Oh, right, okay. But it can be a bit of a challenge sometimes because a lot of places have like a minimum spend. Yeah, it's no. like, I don't want to spend five pounds on petrol just to fill up that little bottle. Thank you very much. Oh, have a nice day. Yeah. Easy peasy. Thanks. Result. We can cook our meal tonight yeah. and probably for the rest of the trip actually, that should do us. Do you remember that passport we found by the side of the road a few episodes back? Well, we were about to stumble across something even more peculiar and much, much more amusing. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to today's episode of What We Spotted By The Side Of The Road. I've brought protection for this one, because I don't really want to touch it. Ta -da! Dun, 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 dun. Ta -da! <laughs> da 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 <laughs> Oh no! What do you reckon? Oh, <laughs> it could be our little mascot. You know, I, I had um, I had Clarence the dinosaur on my unicycle. Oh yeah, we can just keep the dildo. We can have um, no. We can have Dave the dildo on Dave, our on our tandem. Dave the dildo. Needless to say, unlike the passport, we didn't plan on taking this roadside find to the local police station. Wow, well spotted, Ed. Well, wow, I know. Yeah. I'm. I, I've, my eyes are peeled for <laughs> for, for, for sex toys on the side of the road. <laughs> We were now fast approaching a section of roads we've both been very excited about riding ever since we started planning this trip. 
Slapton Sands is a pretty unique feature on the UK's coastline. Stretching for about three miles, this beach divides the saltwater sea to the east from the freshwater lake of Slapton Lay to the west. We learned that it had played a pretty significant role during the Second World War, because due to its similarity to the beaches in Normandy, Slapton Sands had been used as a practice ground to rehearse the D-Day landings. Due to the exposed nature of this road, the winds were very strong, and even though you couldn't ask for a flatter section, the riding here was very tough going. Oh, it's cold! <laughs> it is. This is our first day of rain on the trip so far. We've been going for two weeks. And it's not only rain, and it's also hailing. <laughs> we had a little bit of hail earlier, didn't we? Today, we thought, oh no, the tent is wet, and everything is going to be wet, and then I was like, well, you know. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, so we'll see how it gets the <laughs> following day. So. Nah, it is fine, isn't it, really? Yeah. Can't really complain. But honestly, today has been absolutely fine. I, I wouldn't even say that it was rain. It was just like little drops. <laughs> After working hard spinning up the hill on the north side of Slapton, we started to consider where on earth we were going to sleep that night. It was already six o'clock, and with much of the land around here looking very privately owned, we knew wild camping was going to be a challenge. So without much of a plan, we just kept riding into the evening, until we reached a point where we simply couldn't ride anymore. Dartmouth is a quaint seaside town located at the mouth of the River Dart. We'd planned to take the ferry across the river to Kingswear, but as we'd arrived so late, ferry crossings had ended for the day. The only possible way around tonight would be to ride a 20 mile detour right around the River Dart. We weren't about to do that, so we started considering staying somewhere in town. Hello. Hi Kim, it's Ed here again. I just called about the room. After a bit of searching, we found a place on booking.com and the owner kindly offered us use of her shop downstairs to store our long tandem. You know, this shop's being refurbished. And Kim said that I could just put it here. So that's what we're gonna do. And I guess we're gonna spend two nights in Dartmouth. Oh, that's mess, is it? We made an explosion. <laughs> so shall I? Stuff, stuff, We'll deal stuff. with that tomorrow. We'll deal with that tomorrow. It's very late, it's 10 o'clock and we'd like to eat some food. <laughs> and I'm tired yeah. and we'll deal with everything tomorrow morning. <laughs> With a place to stay sorted, our attention now shifted to food. We'd ridden 45 hilly miles today, and we were both absolutely starving. 21st century, sometimes you have to go out and hunt for food. <laughs> yeah, I saw, saw a Chinese place, which we're hoping is still open. We looked up, it said it was like open until 11. It's there. It's, it's just <laughs> there. I shall know. <laughs> Zhang's restaurant. It's closed. Yeah, look. 10 p.m. Just five minutes late. Oh, no, to, no, no, to random. <laughs> it's Wednesday. It was, uh, okay. it was five, uh, 5 p.m. to random. Oh, well, we were late. Okay, to random. We were past random. <laughs> there's, like, there's not even, there's no one around to even ask. It is actually dead. Hi, Hi there, excuse me. Do you live around here? No, I'm on holiday. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> or even so, do you know if there's anywhere open, like for takeaways or anything? Do you, do you have any inside info? Oh, it's shut now. Yeah, um, that's what we're finding. It's like 10 o'clock. <laughs> there's an Indian over the back there. They oh. might be open late. Okay, they might yeah. be, mightn't they? Yeah, yeah okay. that's a good shout. Yeah. Armed with valuable new information from a late night dog walker, we excitedly hurried off towards the curry house the prospect of masala and naan bread making our mouths water. But we really shouldn't have got our hopes up, because just like the Chinese, it was also closed. Well, that's not happening. You know you're in trouble when not even the Taj Mahal is open. So we headed back to our room to regroup and devise a new plan of action.
All right, we are prepared. Bon appétit. Oh, it's you. very hot. Watch it. Oh, it smells incredible. Mm. Very delicious. Yeah. Our day off in Dartmouth started with a bit of admin. Namely, hanging up our damp tent in the shower and washing our sweaty clothes in the sink. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Later in the morning, we wandered down to the mouth of the river to check out Dartmouth Castle. Built in the 1300s, its main purpose was to defend the harbour from French raids during the Hundred Years' War. This, coupled with other fortifications along the bank, helped keep Dartmouth and the rest of the towns upriver protected. Down by the castle, there were also some caves to explore, but of course, none as impressive as Willie Wilcox's. So we walked back into town to have lunch. It was a relaxing day off the bike, and after grabbing a little food from the co-op for the road ahead, we ended the day heading back to the Taj Mahal this time at a much more reasonable hour. Curry, 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 oh curry, curry, God, curry. I'm so excited. We're using this as fuel for <laughs> cycling. Gonna head up towards Exeter tomorrow. Excited? Very much, but I'm more excited about food here. Me too. Me too. <laughs> bye, bye. Bye, bye. Back in the shop to collect the bicycle. Hey all. Doing alright? Ready to ride? Oh yes, Ed, I think I'm ready to ride. I've been in this little store cupboard for a day and I wanna get on the road. Okay then, let's let's do it. <laughs> Back at it, we caught the car ferry across the River Dart to Kingswear. We were now just 130 miles from Poole and the end point to our southwest coast cycle. Recharged from the rest day, we pushed onwards, our sights set in the direction of eczema. The fact that we were close to completing our mission was a huge motivator keeping us pedaling. But that didn't negate the fact that we'd still been on the road for over two weeks now and we were both simply feeling tired. Soon after climbing out of Torquay, Ashola's energy levels absolutely plummeted and she needed to take a break. How are you feeling? So sleepy. I need like a 15 minute nap. <laughs> I couldn't have asked for a more enthusiastic stoker on this trip. Heaving this heavy tandem over the long climbs and pedalling for five hours a day is physically exhausting, but you've done so well. Are you right to get down to a little? Yeah. And we might be able to find like a bus stop or something that you can just chill in. Because I'm, I'm just concerned it's going to rain. I mean, there's already, you can see the rain on the hill over there. It's coming, is it? It's coming, yeah. We just need to get across that bridge down there. Okay. And then there's a little literally on the main road the way that we're going. Okay. Um, yeah. What you got in here? I will show you. Last time we've been a good Christmas. You want it? Oh yeah. Got a load of bourbons. Uh huh. Got those peanuts, bananas. We'll fry oh, it. Oh, perfect. Chocolate and tangerine. Tangerines. That's so nice. Oh, oh I missed this one. After a good feed at the nearby Lidl, Ashola felt strong enough to continue. 
So we rode onwards to Starcross, on the bank of the River X. You want to just walk and ask? Do you want to just go over and ask? Yes. Yes, I do. All right, so we did want to take the ferry across there, but I think we're about 15 minutes late and the tide is too far out. That's a shame. Didn't really check the times. I just figured it would be it would be running a bit later because all the other ferries seem to have been, but yeah, of course, it's tide dependent, isn't it? Yeah, nothing's running across there, is it? <sighs> so without a better option, we rode north along the psychopath towards Exeter with the idea of taking a bridge across the river about nine miles up. See how dark it is. It's like only five o'clock. <laughs> this isn't this isn't the sun going down. This is the dark clouds, the big old cumulonimbus clouds coming in, and they're gonna make us very wet. Just as the weather started to turn seriously dire, we spotted a pub called the Turf Hotel right by the park. Do you want to find somewhere to shelter? Yeah. We darted straight towards it, thankful they had a marquee set up in the garden in which to take shelter. So yeah, we're, we're just thinking that maybe it's best to, I mean, it's another, I don't know, to get all the way around back to Exmouth cycling. It's another 15 miles. 14, 15 miles, or it's three miles back to the ferry, and then we camp out somewhere tonight, and then just take the ferry tomorrow. As it happens, we didn't miss the ferry today because it wasn't even running. I think because of COVID stuff. So first ferry is tomorrow morning. First ferry is first of May, which is tomorrow at ten past ten. So we're possibly best just to ride back or. I don't know, find a little camp out here. Yeah. And then tomorrow we can get up and get ready for that first ferry at 10 past 10. I oh, know it's options, we're just, we're just thinking, aren't we? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly happy just going back and taking care of the yeah. Decision made, and with the rain finally cleared up, we rode back the way we'd come, the plan to take the Starcross ferry the next morning. Now all we had to do was find somewhere to camp. With much of the land around here not looking very suitable for wild camping, we tried knocking on a couple of doors to see if anyone would agree to us camping out in their garden. Sorry. Just, no, no, absolutely no problem. After a couple of polite rejections, we stumbled across Ron, who took pity on us and was more than happy for us to pitch up. God, you look like a martial arts expert. <laughs> take, to take me jaw out. <laughs> There was definitely a moment back there getting drenched out on the cycle path that we both questioned why we decided to do this. But now stood in Ron's garden, watching the sun go down and drinking some hot tea, we were reminded that it's moments like these which make the whole trip worthwhile. It truly had been a wonderful ride, but it felt right that it would soon be coming to an end. 100 miles was now all that stood between us and our finish point in Poole. So be sure to tune in next time for the final instalment of our tandem cycle tour around the southwest coast. Hey de hey, and welcome to a slightly different end of the video section. We're going to attempt to do it from the bike. And if you were wondering, uh, no, this isn't the UK. This is Georgia. <laughs> We've been riding across for the last couple of weeks. It's a lovely autumn day, a little bit damp. There's a, there's a Georgian van just there. Um, heading to a place called Bojomi at the moment, but you don't need to know that because all I'm going to do now is thank the lovely supporters on Patreon who are supporting us and helping us to continue to do these amazing trips. So thank you very, very much. You also get to see a little bit behind the scenes. I don't remember the names. I just read them off this little card here. So thank you very much. Alistair Duran, Almas Kenneth, Brad Allen Armstrong, Brett St. Pierre, Buzz Covington, Christopher Janssens, Cosmic Disaster, Craig Piper, Damon Walker, where were we? Uh, David Tobin, Elijah Legenda, Gerd Navaya, Gary Hull, Joachim Johansson, Jordan Pilling, Jason Rebecca Chivers, Mike Paris, Michael Wolfendale. I'm running out of breath. Should really do this stuff downhill, shouldn't we? Uh, Neil Brooks, Philip Merritt, Seymour Butts, Sharon Chong, Stephen Jones, Warren Snyder, and Wolfie. 
Thank you very much. And we will see you next week for the final video of our UK Southwest Coast tandem adventure. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> See you then. Fittings <laughs> from Georgia. <laughs>